Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. It is the Earth Master out here, May 20th, 2025, 1028 p.m. California time. Real quick, a uh, member drawing will be held tomorrow. I got sidetracked today with the uh, a lot of stuff going on here on my end, but member drawing will be held tomorrow, just FYI. Latest activity shows a 3.3 earthquake here. Uh, looks like in the red flag across the area of Turkey. I also got some movement stirring up here in California within the last couple hours or so. A uh, little bit of uh, activity around the Brawley Seismic Zone, the Imperial Fault, and also around the San Andreas Fault here in the southern segment. The latest quake, though, here in the last hour shows a little small microquake around the Highland Park area of California. As far as anything above 2.5, well, there it is. Not a whole lot there on the map. Uh, a little bit of, like I said, a little bit of smaller activity stirring up here across Southern California in the last 24 hours, mainly there across the plate boundary of the Imperial and the Brawley Seismic Zone. Nothing big going on there for now. San Francisco, pretty quiet. Still looking at uh, a whole lot of nothingness going on there across Cali the uh, Bay Area of Northern California for now. Um, some movement up here off the coast of Oregon. Got a very shallow earthquake. 1.8 earlier this afternoon i can i can pretty much guess or, or tell you guys what exactly that is and that's a crustal quake due to the strain out here with the cascadia subduction zone let's go ahead and check out the trimmer real quick where there's still quite a bit of trimmer stirring up in the last 24 hours 535 epicenters of trimmer some down here across northern california right around where that crustal quake is happening and a lot up around the uh, Washington area. So we got, uh, you know, if you look here on the map, uh, this trimmer activity is occurring underneath this area, about 40 to 45 kilometers underneath this zone. There's an earthquake that happened just upstream here uh, in a very shallow earthquake. Not a big earthquake, but it just goes to show you that the trimmer activity occurring down into the subduction zone is adding further strain and stressing the region upstream here. You know, it, it's hard to say if we're going to see a big earthquake anytime soon with all this trimmer activity that's been stirring up, but it's it's possible. We always got the, the possibility here that we're looking at a larger earthquake when we're experiencing larger trimmer upticks here. If we look at the last month here, I want to show you guys the total tally. We're getting up there. We're only, you know, just just over halfway through with the month of May. There's a, a lot of time here that wasn't accounted for as far as trimmer activity. This stirred up about the second week of May here. But if you look, um, look at this total tally. We're approaching almost 9,000 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. And that's a decent number there. Um mixed bag mainly a down south a little bit up north around seattle recently but that's a that is a considerable amount of trimmer activity occurring unto into the subduction zone and that is obviously adding strain out there across the locked area of the cascadia whether this will be enough trimmer activity to stir up the big one or not who knows uh you know it's definitely something to watch pretty closely here it has surpassed surpassed the last trimmer event that stirred up back uh, in August and September, October of last year. Uh, so yeah, it's hard to say exactly what's going to happen here, folks. Just got to be on guard for anything that does take place. Uh, Washington area, not seen a whole lot of activity up here. Surprisingly, only one earthquake shown up on the map early this morning. Most of the time, though, when we see elevated trimmer, out, uh, trimmer activity around the Seattle area, We'll see, uh, you know, some earthquake activity stirring up. But right now here in the last 24 hours, it's absolutely quiet. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there on the map. But let's just double check. Make sure we got the latest information here uh, that's being provided to us. And I forgot. Weren't they having a little issue? We'll check back on that here in just a second. Yeah, we got that privacy error uh, taking place with that. But I'm pretty certain here that you know i've been visiting this website for a long time here and i've never had any issues uh but there as far as earthquake activity goes there's not man not a whole lot i don't see anything showing up there uh this is the recent data nothing absolutely nothing showing up uh texas area out in western texas the uh, permian basin area a lot of oil fields getting hit with earthquake activity nothing new there 
New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. One earthquake, if you look way up north here in the uh, Connecticut area, two-pointer. That is in a zone that can see some larger earthquake activity here. Uh, down around New York, uh, historically, they can have some big earthquakes. Who would have thought, right? Directly underneath uh, New York. Yes, that can happen there. So a little bit of earthquake activity ramping up there today and in the past 30 days or so. It's been quite active, more so than normal out there across various areas of these hazard zones there in the uh, states. Uh, Four-pointer off the coast here of the Big Island of Hawaii, 4.2. About 20 miles deep underneath this area. It's very typical for this region to see that activity that far deep. Uh, it doesn't look like it stirred up anything there as far as any uh, differences there across Kilauea Volcano. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the uh, diff the uh, deformation data uh, for Kilauea Volcano. There's the uh, pause in the eruption. There's the eruption, short-lived eruption that is. And then we're starting to go back here with inflation. This is the summit east rift zone, the tilt meter. This is telling us here that the inflation is building underneath the volcano again. And we'll likely see an eruption here. Uh, very soon it's pretty much matching the previous level so I wouldn't doubt it if we see that uh, stir up sometime maybe even tonight it is starting to glow out there so uh, it could be getting very close there for the Kilauea volcano erupting again episode number 22 or 23 it's uh it's just been a rinse and repeat cycle there uh, there's that six-pointer across Papua New Guinea, 6.4 earthquake, originally coming in as a 6.6. .6. That, uh, you know, got downgraded a little bit as far as any newer activity in the region. Looks like uh, some renewed da deep activity here across the Tonga Trench. There's at least one earthquake there in the white circles indicating some newer deep activity. Um, aside from that, movement up north here around Taiwan, Japan area. Got a four-pointer stirring up here right on that subduction zone. Fairly deep as well, about 84 miles deep into this area. Nothing going on across the Nankai Trough for now, but it is an area of interest for large earthquake activity here soon, I feel. Uh, the area across the Mediterranean region and Turkey. Well, there's that three-pointer, 3.3 .3 across the Turkey area showing up. Aside from that, uh, just some older movement there across the Atlantic. Looks like South America down here, off the tip of South America, starting to stir back up again. This is the area that had the seven-pointer down here. Oh, a number of weeks back, starting to stir up some earthquake activity here again. Whether you want to call it aftershock activity or increasing pressure leading to earthquake activity in this area, take your pick. Uh, I see it as a form of increasing pressure, increasing strain, resulting in further earthquake activity down there. And uh, they've got a number of earthquakes out there around the Perchili Trench. A bunch of threes and fours. Middle America Trench up here, fairly active as well. Uh, it does look like there was uh, a little bit of activity south here of Southern California. 3.3 .3 being reported earlier today. Uh, that not showing up here on the, the USGS map, but it is on the EMSC model. So there's a little bit of activity stirring up down here across Baja, Baja California area. Um, aside from that, uh, I'll just kind of keep an eye on things here. See what happens. Definitely got uh, a lot going on here. Space weather activity, well, well, a little bit of M flare movement. If you look here, hopefully this uh, Space Weather Prediction Center is working tonight. I don't want the black screen out here, but... They've been having a little bit of issues there with their uh, loading of the data. And I don't know why. So we'll wait for that to load. See if these other ones are going to work here. The magnetogram image of the sun. Uh, that M flare, I believe, is coming off of a center portion here. Uh, center area of the sun. Let's see what we got. This was from uh, yesterday. It's a very weak M flare, but I believe it came off a center portion here of the sunspot 4089. Um, let's take a look here at the uh, solar movie, shall we? See what we got. 
slow this down just a little bit so we can see when it does happen. Uh, we'll go right about here because it happened fairly recently. One of these areas up here produced that M flare earlier today. We'll find out once it once it sparks here. I believe it was this area. Oh, I was wrong. It was back over here. Yeah, it was this area back here. So that's going to be sunspot number. Uh, looks like 4087 here. Back over here. I, I guess that would make sense. This area is fairly well uh, disorganized. This is about the only region that has some type of complexity. So within this area, I, I believe it's within this region right here. Aside from that, there's just a mixed bag of sunspots out here. But there's not a whole lot of noteworthy activity out here right now. A couple regions down across the southeastern limb of the sun. But uh, overall, I, I don't really see anything spectacular going on as far as any major flare threat goes. No major roars in the forecast. There's still a coronal hole out there that's been facing us, but mainly to the south. If you look here, it's a giant area on the sun producing some high-speed solar wind stream. But it's all pointed south of the Earth-Sun plane. Tonight, still got some severe weather ramping up there across portions of the south. Tornado, wind, and some hail threats out there. We look at the uh, storm reports through the day today. Well, we got uh, some decent uh, tornado reports. I've seen Reed Timmer directly um, intercepted there. A tornado in the Dominator. That was quite impressive, to say the least. Um, 11 reports of some tornado activity out there today across this area. A lot of hail and a lot of wind reports out there. As uh, far as the future goes, looks like some marginal risk out there for tomorrow and the next couple days. Nothing major on the extended forecast for now. Seismograph stations out there, folks, on this Tuesday night, you know, they, they look pretty quiet. Not a whole lot showing up on the map for tonight, but we still got the elevated trimmer. We still got, uh, you know, some uh, this little quake right upstream here from the trimmer activity is very interesting there because it's a very shallow crustal quake happening right at the surface level of the Cascadia. And it just goes to show you here that the strain is majorly increasing following all this trimmer activity here and it's just it could pop at any second here it could pop while i'm speaking uh, you know whether it does or not we just have to be prepared i mean we could be living in a time here 2025 where we could see the cascadia out here go the last time was back in 1700 uh, last time the southern portion of the san andreas fault ruptured and the full rupture was 1700 at least so there, a lot of time has passed here historically we're living in a generation here where we should be experiencing some large earthquake activity soon and common. Uh, it's been relatively quiet out here across you know, the West Coast for far as that movement goes. But the buildup has been building and it's just a matter of time. And we may be in that time frame right now. Got to keep an eye on this closely. Um, just got to be prepared out there, folks. Uh, for now... Um, have a good night again the the member drawing I was supposed to do it today I apologize I I got super sidetracked I set up the pull out here for the kids and um, it's starting to get warm out here in Northern California so I set up the pool out here swimming with the kids for a little bit and just enjoying the day and I completely forgot about it so we got to do that tomorrow I'll add all the members out there for the member drawing uh, tomorrow um, you know, most of the time we do it around the 15th of the month, but we decided to switch over to the 20th of the month. So a whole lot of switching around, but uh, we'll, we'll get that member drawing held tomorrow. That will be a live member drawing for the members only. So if you are a member of this channel, you will be included in that drawing tomorrow. And you can win some cash prizes, gift cards, uh, Earthmaster merchandise, or if you like geology mining kits, stuff like that it is uh, pretty cool to win. Free. Completely free. So uh, jump on board. Become a member today if you're not. But we'll do that tomorrow. Um, pinky promise. We'll get that done. Have a good night, folks. We'll see you guys back out here tomorrow sometime for the uh, Wednesday morning update. Stay safe out there.